The progression towards 500 pounds, um, honestly, you, it sounds crazy, but you wake up and you look in the mirror and you're just like, wow, this is, this is me. That was a, a hard time in my, my life, but I had to, I had to get past that. And so you got a, you got a choice to make. You got to sink or swim. I come from a football family. Football is definitely in my blood. My playing weight in high school, my senior year was 336. Being the biggest guy on the, on the team, I did have limitations. He was a very respectful young man, very happy-go-lucky young man. Uh, he was a very large young man at the time. He played really big, but he couldn't play really long because he was, you know, he was a big guy. He was in for two or three plays, and then he's out. You just couldn't depend on him to physically do what you were asking him to do. Coming from a big family, it was the norm until the passing of my father. So that's when it really, it got out of hand. Oh man, my dad was, that was a Superman. You know, a lot of people they have, the heroes may be John Wayne, your favorite athlete, but I had, I had my own personal Superman. That was my father for me. My father was actually a small town pastor. I uh, set up three churches here in North Carolina. My dad taught me everything from God, the clothes, the cars, the girls, you name it. My, my dad was there for that. He was diagnosed in January uh, of 05 from a type of liver cancer. I can remember the smell of the hospital room. Uh, I remember a lot of the conversations that we had as well. I mean, it, it was an emotional time because my father, he was strong and stern and he didn't show a whole bunch of emotion but i could definitely tell his mindset was definitely switching uh, as we entered in the last couple weeks of his life and you know it was it was something hard for all of us because we didn't see that come after losing my father it was just so surreal turning into a man i, I needed him there for for certain things and it's really hard when you don't have that your backbone to reach back to or you don't have that person you, you're used to going to or you're used to giving you advice. Uh, my emotional eating uh, got out of hand. My eating habits went into hyperdrive. So I can remember it used to be a place in Concord, uh, North Carolina called Quaker State and Lube, and they had like a 25 cent wing night. And uh, I literally went in and ate 100 wings. So I'd go grab snacks from the refrigerator late at night, and you know, I'd, I'd eat in my room by myself. And sometimes I'd even cry, cry while I would eat because